All right, inst I'm installing recessed lights right now, and I'm going through plaster walls. So I measured, I measured four feet away from the wall, kind of a big wall, and I made my circle. So now I got to cut through that uh, plaster. What I used is a uh, little uh, razor blade, and I went around the circle. And now I'm probably going to chip at it with this little hammer, with a little chisel hammer right here. There's a little chisel. Let's see if we can get that thing out nice and uh, round. All right, so I'm using LED uh, recess kit, and it's um, it's pretty cool because you can adjust, what, you know, how bright the color. If you like 5,000K, super white, or if you like the more yellow, 27. It's got 3,000, 35, 4,000. It's pretty cool. So you can just flip up the switch. You can adjust how bright your light is. I'll show you on this one. This one's set at 5,000. Put it down to the lowest one. See how that dims it yellow? Bright white. There's in between. So that's really cool. And the way these install is there's little clips on them right here. You just push these up, slide it through the wall up there, through the hole, and then you let go. And then they'll hold with the pressure of that spring. You do your electricity, you unscrew these, and there's little clips in there just like this ones and you just push them in pretty easy you got one for ground one for your neutral one for your hot and then you got two more to run another light to it if you want to all right so I finished my hole here it doesn't have to be super perfectly round but um, just make sure your light goes in there um, what I use is one of these oscillating tools works really good okay this thing here and the blade went dull really fast but that, that's good for cutting the lath pieces here and you'll notice it's going to be loose once you once you cut your hole these lath end pieces will be a little loose here okay so take another little piece here run it inside go the length of the lath and then you're going to drill some screws through that and that'll sturdy up that loose loose uh, lath right there all right, once you got your cut almost, you know, where you want it, and you got a little bit of plaster that you need to go, just get a razor blade and just start cutting at it like this. And that, that plaster will, it will it's, you'll be able to cut it. work it until it's nice and round. All right, so I had this Hercules wood plastic blade. It had some sharp blades diagonal right here. Pretty sharp. It was more for wood. I tried cutting through the plaster. It did work for a little bit, but it, as you can see, it grinded the, the little feet off real fast. So I can't cut through the wood no more. But don't throw this away if you got plaster walls, because this thing, just the vibration alone, and the thinness of that metal cuts this like butter and as you can see how nice and round I got that I use this with none of the blades at the tip and this thing just vibrates so good that it just allows you to cut a nice perfect circle to that plaster I did that one and the other one over there I didn't do it on the first two and those ones look like crap compared to this so that's a good little tip to keep these little old blades because they're thin enough to still cut through the plaster. Of course I gotta go buy a new one now because I can't cut through the wood. It just kind of makes a bunch of smoke. I try to cut through that but next I'll be running the wires. Alright for the electrical I'm going to be using 14.2. Uh, the lights recommended 12.2 but I'm going to go to 14.2 because uh, I believe that's code in most places anyway for lighting. These LEDs they only take up like I don't know what it is, less than 20 watts per per bulb. So, all right, so I'm using four lights. You can see right here, it's only 13 watts, 13 watts per LED. Um, output is 880 lumens, which is not bad. Uh, and again, you got you can uh, adjust the appearance of the color. 
2700K all the way up to 5000K. So 13 watts times 4, that's you know, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 46, 40, 79, 50, 52 or so. So that's 50 watts. That's nothing for, to run 14.2 cable. And I got way more than I needed just for if I ever want to run any more, any more of these lights somewhere else. So in this big room, it's 20 by 14, 20 by 15 in here. And so I'm only using four, one there, one there. And right here is the other two, and as you can see, it's not exactly too round, it's kind of jagged, my, my uh, cutting. So I'm going to go and use that tool again and, and shave some more off so it's nice and round. Same thing with this one. Alright, and uh, this ornament's going to have to come down, it's already broken, and plus this thing is not even centered to my sliding door. So you can see as I go up, it's push to the left about a foot and so if I'm going to use this for a dining room um, I have this little piece of wood 4 by 8 piece of uh, panel to show you where the table would be if I put the table there in the center and it gives you enough room for all the chairs you can see that thing up there is off and I can't have that it's a little bit off so I'll, if I run a chandelier or light here it's going to be off from the table all right now I'm going to run the cable what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it right through here through here I'm going to take these last last boards off run it to here and then I'm going to run it down this uh, piece here to here and then I'll run that one to the next one and then I'll run another cable going from here back this way running all the way down to here and then I'll plug it into there and then that one will plug into that alright so I like to wire up one of my lights before I put it up there as you can see I put it up here in the side you can knock that thing completely out but I just made it big enough to get in there and then really it's simple you just push these thing into these little clips and then that's it and then just tuck it back into there and then screw the plate back on really simple and I'll put this up on my up up in there and then I'll run my wire from there to there and then I'll be ready to wire the next one there so yeah pretty easy to install these compared to the old style which I'll show you right here this is the older style so you gotta screw those in right there those legs nail them in and then you gotta take this box out and put your wires through there it's kind of a pain in the butt it's so much simpler all right I got the first one in it was pretty damn easy just shove that thing in there those clips open up and they grip really tight. I mean, that thing's up there nice and snug. Uh, and that's good. That's what you want. You want that thing airtight. It looks really good. Fortunately, I haven't taken the, the wallpaper off yet, but I wanted to see what it looked like. And plus, I got to patch up all these little cracks in the plaster. Take all that wallpaper off. Feel all this stuff in here. <laughs> A lot of work. But uh, I didn't get this on camera, but the other day, I fixed the the wire that goes up to the breaker box upstairs because what they did is they ran that thick cable going outside of the wall and through this hole so I had to go and turn off all the power take the cable out from the fuse box upstairs pull it back out and that's really thick gauge cable pull it back out and then go back in through this way into the wall so I wouldn't have that showing and now I could patch up those holes <sighs> but yeah I'm getting there now I got my wire hanging here and all I have to do is uh, run a wire going down to the switch here, run it up here, run it down there and then I'll meet it in this light here and then I'll tie it into that light and then I'll take another cable and run it to these lights over here. Alright for the old wiring that's up in this ornament here, I found a wire to it, it's this one right here, it's a real old wire here it's got a red wire in it I don't know where that goes but I know this wire is uh, the one for that one up there because this is the hot that was connected to it when I disconnect it there's no power up there when I connect it there's power on the left side of the left leg up there on the left side there's power 
that tells me that's the wire, the switch. There used to be a switch here for it. This is the power in. All right, got the new wire ran. I ran it from this light going in here and down here. And here it is, the new wire here. And that one's pretty simple. You just plug in the, the whites to your power um, from your main power. Put the, 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 um, the whites together, common. And then you got your black wire, you run that one to your switch. And the other black wire runs to the, the wire coming from up there. This one's a dimmer switch, so you can see. And this is all, they're all on the 5000K brightness. That's it dimmed. That's it off. You can see there's no twitching. Some of these things twitch. Uh, some of the cheap LEDs that you can buy on eBay and stuff. I've heard of people getting ones that are twitch. These have no static, no twitching, no noise. I dim it. This is just a uh, Lutron dimmer. Nothing fancy. Probably paid 20 bucks for it at Home Depot. So yeah, works perfectly. Uh, I got this one in all the way. Just wanted to see how it would look. The other ones aren't out all the way because I wanted to see. I wanted to change the uh, different lighting to see how it would look. But yeah, it's pretty much done. Now all I have to do is uh, <laughs> skim coat all these walls. I gotta still gotta take off all this wallpaper that's on the ceiling, and then go and find all my cracks. Put some fiber tape, fiber tape on those, mesh tape, and then skim coat over it with some some plaster. And all all the walls have already been. Uh, Wallpaper's already taken off, so all I have to do is do a skim coat here. I gotta do a real thick skim coat on this one because it's got sheetrock and, and uh, plaster mixed together and some holes. This one's almost done. I gotta go over it one more time, skim coat. And that one's almost done too. I got a couple little imperfections I gotta fix. But yeah, this is gonna be done soon. And after that, I, I gotta get a new floor in here. I'm still debating if I want tile. Or if I should get that vinyl plank stuff, but we'll see. And that thing's gonna come down because that thing's just—it's—it's uh, it's misaligned. You can see where the where the lights are. That's—it's off from the center of this wall here. So I'll just have to take that off. I was gonna fix it, but nope. And again, I found the electrical switch to that, so I put it back. On there, I got rid of that uh, old wire. It's uh, had a little jumper on it. This stuff sucks. If you bend this stuff, it, it cracks so easy because it's so old. It's very old uh, cable from the knob and tube style. So I put a new jumper in there, and I got the uh, power coming in here, and then the jumper that I put on there. And I taped it up with a cap. So, got my switch back. All right, here I am. And working on it again another day. And you can see I got most of that wallpaper gone. Um, this little dark spot is where the, where the under, where the glue and the paper of the wallpaper got stuck. Like most of the top layer came off, but that's what stuck. That I have to hit up with water, warm water and vinegar. Scrape that off with that. But you can see over here, I got all of it off over here. And this is what it looks like once you use the vinegar and scrape it thoroughly. Uh, so on this side, I still got some spots, as you can see, the dark spots right there too. And I still got, this is what the wallpaper looks before I take it off, just like that. So I still gotta do this section and I'm done with the wallpaper scraping. And you can see all my little cracks. I started putting, you know, screws to reinforce them. If they're a little loose, you put screws on both sides. And I got most of that done. I just got that one crack to do there. Crack here. I got a screw in. And then after you screw them in, what I do is I go and, uh, you know, I, I score them with a razor blade. 
so the crack is real deep so when you put in your mud it, it actually will you know it'll actually go in there if you just leave it cracked real small like this no mud's gonna go in it it's gonna be real hard for it to uh, feel the crack so it's good to score it really well and then uh, after I fill it with mud a little bit I'll go and get some fiber tape and I'll run the fiber tape over that so you can see over here I filled that one so now I'm gonna put some fiber tape over those cracks that I already uh, filled same way right here and that's where I'm at and I'm gonna end this video and I'll make another video as I go and finish this up some more And in the next video, I'll probably be taking off of that ornament. I don't know if I get it on camera, but I'll try to when I remove it. And I'll show you a before and after. And I don't know, hopefully on video you can see how big this room is with me standing kind of right here. It's pretty big. This is 20 foot long by like 14 or 15 wide there. I think it's like 16, 17 wide here at the far point. So it's a big ceiling, it's a big job. You can see how many cracks the plaster had. So it's one of those jobs that takes a lot of time. I mean, I'm no professional at this, but I'm doing the best that I can.